Man, guys, let me tell you something. It goes without saying that Spider-Man No Way Home is the best MCU movie of the year, and rightfully so. It has a lot of great things going for it, which I can't really talk about right now because I want to do a full review later when I can actually go over some of the spoilers. Just a fair warning, anything that's going to be talked about right now is all that came from the trailers. We already knew all of this information, so don't get mad at me if you didn't know that Green Goblin was in the film. He's in the trailers, okay? Now with that out of the way, this is the best Spider-Man film of his three solo films in the MCU, and also the best Tom Holland performance that we have in the MCU to date. I was one to always say that I liked Tom Holland's Spider-Man better in Civil War than I did in his solo films, but that is not correct after this film. This was definitely a darker take on the Spider-Man story, especially for the MCU and his other two solo films. Because man, he is put through the ringer on this one, dude. He is definitely maturing through this film, just like this film is maturing from the previous two. Now, Tom Holland's performance was outstanding, to say the least. He shows an incredible amount of depth through this movie from the highs and the lows, and you'll know why once you see the movie. And I will also say that I didn't originally care for the character of MJ, but she does play a solid love interest through this film, and I've always loved Ned, so nothing really negative can be said about him, but I do have more to say about Ned, and I will have to wait until another video. But for the villains of this movie, I want to talk a little bit about Dr. Octavius, Norman Osborn's Green Goblin, as well as Electro. Now to say they give these characters a lot of love and screen time is actually quite an understatement. Starting with Electro, I did not like his character in The Amazing Spider-Man 2, it just wasn't quite for me, but with that being said, he's an amazing character in this film. If I remember correctly, they even brought back his theme song from The Amazing Spider-Man 2, which of course I loved that, but his character has changed a bit as well. He's less of a strange, nerdy type of character and has a little more swagger and charm to him and he's definitely the funniest of the villains, like he has some of the best one-liners that are actually hysterical. Now, Dr. Octavius, I want to mention something that is somewhat of a spoiler, I guess, but also not really. I was worried that they were going to backpedal on him being a good guy at the end of his film for the sake of making him a villain in this one, but they explained it by saying that when he was taking from his world and brought to this one, he had his uh, claws around Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man's like neck, which was at the end of Spider-Man 2 before he demanded his claws to listen to him, so that adds up pretty well, and his performance was phenomenal. And he was just amazing to see on the big screen, like his tentacles were great to see in an action sequence again. Just like the Green Goblin. And I love Willem Dafoe's take on this character, and he shows so much love for his performance as well. There's not one scene that wasn't good with him in it. There is one scene that was so good with him in particular that I'm not going to spoil it here, but it's in an apartment, and you'll know it when you see it. And Willem Dafoe is not just going through the motions, he's not showing up for a paycheck, he is giving it his all in this performance, and it really shines. Doctor Strange didn't quite have nearly the screen time that I thought he was going to have, but I'm happy they did that. It allows Spider-Man to be Spider-Man and figure out his problems on his own. You know, finding his own way rather than following the lead of his mentors, such as Tony, Mysterio I guess to some degree, and then Doctor Strange in this film. He got to make his own choices, and that was really a good thing to see. This movie just had so many moments that had the nerd in me just being all giddy, and there's not only a lot of fun, like, fan service moments, but there's just a lot of really good character moments and good character interactions. And I think the ending of this movie is perfect for the character going forward. I've heard some people say that they are upset about the way it ended, and I'll explain why it's a good thing in a different video. I will definitely be going back to the movies to see it again in the next few days, because it's just that good. But with that being said, I'm going to bring this video to an end, so thank you all for watching, hit the sub to show some love, and to know when I'll be doing my full review, and above all else, have a marvelous day of course.